Hey everybody, this is Bob Cargill from Bob Cargill's Marketing Show. How are you doing? It is January 11, 2023, and I am hoping you are happy, healthy, safe, and sound. Yes, that's most important. Hey, I am talking to you from my home office. Yes, world headquarters for Bob Cargill's Marketing Show here in Sudbury, Massachusetts. And I am saying to you again, let's underscore that I hope you are happy, healthy, safe, and sound, that all is well in your neck of the woods, wherever you are, whatever you are doing. I hope today is going ridiculously awesome for you and every day goes ridiculously awesome for you. Yes, I'm going to update you on a few things that I've been doing. Just check it in with you. Talk a little bit about marketing, a little bit about social media, a little bit what I've been up to. And again, whatever you've been up to, I hope it's all been going very, very, very well for you. Yes. And for me, yeah, I'd say things are going pretty, pretty well. The holidays were busy, hustle, bustle, hectic, complicated, and in some ways, awesome in many ways, ridiculously awesome. In many, many, many ways, I had a great holiday season. I hope you did too. Few things I can say that I'm officially running the Boston Marathon once again. That's coming up on April 17, 2023, Patriots Day. And I will be running, it will be my 21st marathon overall. I got to remember all these numbers. My 18th. Boston Marathon, my 15th Boston Marathon for charity, and my ninth Boston Marathon for Christopher's Haven. And Christopher's Haven is a ridiculously awesome nonprofit organization that provides housing for families whose kids are undergoing cancer treatment nearby. So, yeah, I'm doing that. I think you all know, if you have listened to me, if you have watched any of my videos, if you do know me, that I'm an avid runner. Been running, yeah, probably for 50 years or so now pretty competitively in, in, in many ways, many, many races, 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons, marathons. So when I say competitively, I'm going back to freshman year in high school when I, I ran spring track that I'm considering the, the beginning, if you will, of my running career, if you will. And that's why I say pretty competitively since then, because I've taken it seriously. I've run I'd say every other day on average up until about three, four, five years ago, and then I started running almost every day. So crazy, isn't it? How, how much I am able to run and I feel so grateful. I feel so lucky that I can still be doing it. I belong to the Greater Framingham Running Club and I run probably about a race a month on average. And again, a lot of those could be 5Ks, 10Ks, shorter races, but the marathons are in there every so often, the half marathons, etc. Love, love, love running. Love, love, love teaching as well. That's the other thing I've been doing the last three or four years or so. So I left the full-time corporate world in spring of 17. So almost six years ago, I can't believe that. I can't believe it. That was in March of 17. And this is January of 17. And, and I started freelancing, contracting, consulting, and teaching part-time as an adjunct professor. And I feel grateful that I've had the opportunities that I've had to teach. And I hope to be teaching for the rest of my life, as long as they will have me. I'm serious. I love it that much. I enjoy going into Boston and teaching on campus at the different schools that I, that I teach at this past fall. I taught at three different Schools, Suffolk University, Northeastern University, and Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, Marketing and Social Media. And I get so much, so much, immeasurable amount of, of satisfaction from teaching. So that keeps me busy. What also keeps me busy is AMA Boston, the American Marketing Association Boston. I am president of AMA Boston. You can look us up at amaboston.org, one of the oldest, largest, AMA chapters, and there are many of them. AMA is the American Marketing Association, national organization for marketing professionals. Love my experience with AMA Boston. I was president for a couple of years, a few years ago, then past president for a couple of years, and now I'm back again as president. Loving it and think highly, extremely highly of my colleagues on the board of directors and thank them 
so much for everything that they do. What a great team we are, the volunteers, the board members, the members, and all our friends who come to our events, our networking and educational events. Yeah, really enjoying that. Can't tell you how much I'm enjoying that. And there's also my book, 20 Jobs, 20 Lessons, A Long Strange Career in Marketing from Junk Mail to Social Media. I started that book. Well, it took, let's put it this way. It was published in June last year, 2022, so not too long ago, six, seven months ago. And it took me three years to write, about six months to get published, and I self-published it on Amazon. So I think I started it in the beginning of 19, so 19, 20, 21. Yep, three full years or so to write, and then about six months, like I said, to get you know everything set up so that I could self-publish it. It is available on Amazon exclusively, ebook in paperback versions. And it's all about my career, but it's all about those 20 lessons that I learned the hard way And each chapter is one of the jobs I had during my professional career. To be exact, there were 18 jobs there in marketing. And that's full-time corporate world, if you will. But there are two surprise jobs. One summer job that I had back in the day, you know, long before my professional career started, at least, you know, a bunch of years before it started. And then one not too long ago, that was part-time after I had left the full-time the corporate world full-time, had a part-time job that not everybody, not many people know that I, I did this. And I shared lessons learned from those two jobs plus the 18 other jobs that are marketing specifically in this book, 20 jobs, 20 lessons. Reach for the brass ring. That's one of them. Yeah. Always, always reach high. Always reach far. Always reach, Period. Because when you grab that brass ring, it's a free ride. And a free ride, I consider an opportunity to have another chance, an opportunity to have another opportunity at something big. And you always want to be reaching, at least that's my feeling, reaching for that brass ring. When you grab it, it's an awesome feeling. It's a ridiculously awesome feeling. So that's one of the lessons in the book. And, and you have to read the book to, to, it's 265 pages or so. I also incorporate a bunch of the blog posts I have written since 2004 when I started my blog, which is, you can see in its entirety at thebobcargill.com. And that's where my blog now resides. And quite a few of those blog posts since 04 are interspersed, I'd say in about you know, the second half or the second two thirds of the book. So it's where I worked, the lesson, and occasionally, especially as you get towards the end of the book, towards the, again, maybe the second two thirds of the book, second half of the book, when I started the blog, you'll read those blog posts and it'll show, I tried to illustrate in words, some pictures, (laughs) quite a few pictures, might surprise you. Um, Me at my desk going way, way back, But I tried to show the evolution, not just of of me in my career, working half my career, say, approximately, before the internet, half after the internet. I mean, yeah, after the internet emerged. Um, But I show my career and how it affected me, but I show how, I talk about how it affected the industry, how the emergence of the internet, the, the emergence and then predominance of social media affected marketing in a big, big, big way. And and that's what you will read all of the above. <laughs> what I just talked about for the last few minutes, that's what you will read in 20 Jobs, 20 Lessons, available only on Amazon. I am busy lately, absolutely promoting that book and talking about that book to whoever will listen. Lots of stories I share in that book and always glad to talk about it with people and answer questions. There's also a lot in there, I think, for younger folks just starting their careers in marketing, just starting their careers in business and students, especially if you're interested in marketing and social media, but just lessons learned the hard way about climbing the corporate ladder in business, and in my case, obviously, specifically the, the, the business of marketing. Hey, let's 
talk just a little bit about social media, and then I'm going to talk about an ad I saw recently, and then I'll wind up. This won't be too, too long of a podcast episode. Social media. As I said, started my blog in 04. So that was my debut, if you will, on social media, putting myself out there. And then, you know, it was all, I think LinkedIn came before my blog. I was one of the first 1 million on LinkedIn. So that's early. I'm an early adopter with regard to technology, social media specifically, online technology, online communications, digital communications. People, even though it's been around for so, so long, social media, people still haven't jumped on the bandwagon. A lot of people, some have, many have, but some haven't, many haven't, and they've fallen dangerously behind. It's not too late, but it's critical, especially if you're in business, to know how to use social media. And for personal reasons, yeah, it's how you keep in touch with your family and friends, people you might not have a chance to talk about, talk with, connect with otherwise. But business, it is almost a job requirement, certainly if you're in the marketing field. But I think it should be a job requirement for anyone who's dealing with customers, clients, contacts, constituents, the outside world. This is how presidents get elected. This is how CEOs help build a better brand, help build their own audience, help establish themselves as thought leaders. This is how salespeople connect with potential customers and clients. Come on. Social media, though, is not in business, I'm talking, to be used the way other marketing channels and sales channels are used. That's like putting a, trying to put a square peg into a round hole if you're trying to use social media the way you would use other marketing channels. No, it's conversational. It's informative. It's educational. It's social. You can't forget the social in social media. If you're going to use social media, and if you're going to use social media successfully, <laughs> absolutely, you cannot forget the social and social media. And that is just be how you are in person with people in person. It's social media networking. It's social media conversations. It's social media relationships. It's social media engagement. It's people to people. So brands with your corporate logos, yeah, you can put yourselves out there and promote and educate and inform, but where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck is when it's human to human, people to people, person to person, me to you, you to me. That's social media. Have I emphasized that enough? And it doesn't matter what channel you're on. LinkedIn is becoming more and more human-centric, more and more personal stories, more and more who you are as a person, not just who you are as a professional. So it's one thing, Absolutely, to have that professional cred and to talk about your achievements and accomplishments and your knowledge and expertise. But it's a whole other thing and it's where you're going to separate yourself from the competition, from the others who are out there. It's a whole other thing to start sharing news about your life and personal pictures and videos and the family pet and your family period, your kids, your significant other whatever it is that you do on the weekend at night when you're not working, or if you are working at night, long days, long nights, like I always have put in on behalf of where you work or on behalf of you as your own boss. It's sharing who you are, what you do, so that people get to know you. And the more people get to know you, the more likely they will be to like you, the more likely they will be to respect you and over time do business with you. That's how social media works. Boom. All right. The ad I want to talk about briefly for a minute or two. Samuel Adams. I'm looking at my left-hand monitor here. My second monitor to my left. Samuel Adams recently released an ad that I watched for their non-alcoholic beer, Just the Haze. Their non-alcoholic beer, Just the Haze, was recently voted best non-alcoholic beer in the country at the Great American Beer Festival. So they put out, Sam Adams did this ad, 60 second spot, where they had a dunk tank filled with beer and they had people, real people, come to the brewery itself 
in the month of January, dry January, that's this month, I'm talking to you during dry January, when a lot of people swear off non-alcoholic, I'm sorry, alcoholic beverages for non-alcoholic beverages. They will not drink alcohol for the month of January. That's why it's called dry January. And instead, they may choose non-alcoholic beverages. And Sam Adams, Just the Haze, is a non-alcoholic beer. So Sam Adams invited real people, tells you the names in this ad, and so it's not paid actors. And they sat on top of a dunk tank, had a flight of beer, mostly alcoholic beer, one of them, apparently the non-alcoholic beer, just a haze, and asked these people, can you tell the difference? And in the ad, I saw only one person be able to tell the difference. The others who couldn't are dunked in the tank, and in the tank, it's real beer. <laughs> real cold beer on a real cold day in January. And that's authentic. That's why it's a great ad. That's very authentic, very real, very genuine, and that's how you want to advertise and market in 2023 and beyond. You want to keep it real. It's also very fun to watch. And that's something ads, advertisers have to be mindful of. Be entertaining, be fun. Because that's how you're going to engage your audience. You don't want to just promote. Sure, you can inform, you can educate. There are other ways to advertise, but being entertaining is might is perhaps the most ideal way to advertise because you capture people's attention. They're smiling, they're laughing, and then they're paying attention and they're listening. Finally, this ad was very convincing. So I liked it, again, for three reasons. Authentic, very authentic, fun, entertaining, yeah. And finally, convincing. That's probably the most important, right? It convinced me that this must be a good beer because most of these people, and these were real people, not paid actors, could not tell the difference between Sam Adams' alcoholic beer and Sam Adams' Just the Haze, the non-alcoholic beer that was voted best non-alcoholic beer in the country at the Great American Beer Festival. This was a great ad, if you ask me. I have not tried Just the Haze, the non-alcoholic beer put out by Sam Adams, but I think I will try it at some point in the future. I based on watching this ad, think it must be worth trying. It must be as good, apparently, according to this ad, according to these people in the ad, as good as their alcoholic beers, and their alcoholic beers are certainly very good, at least the ones I've tried. I do like a good beer now and then. So that's my review, if you will, of Sam Adams' ad for Just the Haze, their non-alcoholic beer, and this ad during the month of January, great timing, dry January. Hey, so... I will wind things down there. I hope, and I will, yeah, reinforce. I'll, I'll end the way I started. I hope you are happy, healthy, safe, and sound. This is January 11, 2023. Not sure when you will see this, when you will watch this, when you will hear me speak these words that I've spoken for almost 20 minutes now. But I hope you are doing well. I hope you and yours are doing very, very, very well. Hope you have a happy new year, a ridiculously awesome 2023. And that's all. That's all from me. That's all from me now. This has been Bob Cargill's Marketing Show, my podcast that, hey, by the way, is almost at its five-year anniversary. Started this, what, back in 18, February, 8, February of 2018. So we're at about five years now. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun. Hey, hope you've had fun listening to me, watching this podcast, listening to this podcast. I wish you well. Stay happy, healthy, safe, and sound. See you. Talk to you again soon.